Who? Happy Halloween. Yes, and thank you for your encouragement for the suggestions, recommendations, and costume ideas I did spend this past weekend at the 11th hour creating a costume, which I will post pictures to next week. Are you excited? Let's just hope the rain doesn't ruin trick-or-treating because that would truly put a damper on this holiday. Last week, during my routine every six-month dental exam, x-rays revealed yet another broken tooth, one of the molars in the back of my mouth. It wasn't painful. It wasn't something that I thought about. I may have felt it or been aware that there was something not fully right, but this is the third time in the past two years that I've got some sort of dental chip going on in my mouth. And according to my dentist, it could potentially be from grinding my teeth while I sleep, which apparently I am clenching my jaws and grinding with such extreme force, biting down, almost grimacing while I sleep. And he suspects this because, as he said previously to me in ways that I found to be mildly creepy, I have the strongest jaw muscles he's ever seen in a human being. Now, I initially took that as a compliment, but neither of us is sure why this is happening. As he puts it, it's probably something mental, not dental. And for that kind of exam, you need to do more metaphorical drilling to get to the root cause of the issues. Some or many of you know me as a social and digital community guy. One of the first, right? So what I'm about to say may come as a surprise, but building a community specifically for a brand on social media, it's over. It doesn't matter. It is irrelevant for every brand from CPG to TV shows to sports fans of a team to retail and luxury enthusiasts. Over. Now, as a brand, if this is still your objective, getting people to talk, measuring likes, comments, engagement, you're wasting time, money, energy, or all, all of the above. The goal is no longer to build a community in your social channels. The strategy is antiquated. So in the weeks and months to come, we're going to talk about the present and future of content, conversation, connectivity, continuity, collaboration, commerce, and conversion, starting from a place of culture, where you belong in culture, how to create it, understanding your role and measuring your impact. The era of engagement is over, and the era of conversion is here. As daylight savings time approaches, this is your semi-annual reminder to change the batteries in your smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors. You do that when you turn back the clocks, you do that in the spring when you uh, spring forward. So do this, or don't. But the most first world practical P I'm ever gonna share is get a Nest Alert. Nest was recently purchased by Google. You know them for their cameras, but the Nest Alert is great. If you have multiple floors, get multiple Nest Alerts. This thing ties into your smart home system, lets you know when the batteries are getting low, the actual like protect device will pulse yellow when the lights are off at night, when you need to change your batteries. You also receive a message during nightly promise, which is an email you get or a text, um, through the Nest app even, if the, um, if the batteries are getting low. You can always just check the battery life on your Protect as well through the app. Or even better, getting the wired Nest that hooks right into the uh, electrical of your house means never having to replace the batteries ever again. And for those of you who don't have a Nest, here are some practical battery tips for just general safety and security. Number one, using the types of batteries other than the ones recommended by the manufacturer of your product will be harmful to the actual smoke or carbon monoxide devices. Number two, do not mix and match batteries or battery types. They're actually different chemical equations even within 
the same size, double A, triple A, Duracell has a slightly different formula than Energizer. Number three, do not place new batteries in with old batteries. Just replace them all at once. And number four, never use rechargeable batteries in your smoke alarm. Also, a few more tips. Don't play with matches, candles, or flamethrowers inside your house. We are almost exactly a year away from the 2020 election. It's less than a week before the 2019 election, which mostly has local races and town councils, county legislatures. A few states have gubernatorial elections or special elections, but even in local elections in off years, voting still matters. Every party, every candidate, everyone wants our vote. A turnout now in an off year will help with polling for next year and other prognostications. So go out and vote, even if it's not something you think will have a huge or massive impact. Okay, now that we're agreed, as we head into the primary season for 2020, let's look at something that's gonna weigh on voters' minds, or at least one aspect and that's a piece of our economy, the U.S. budget deficit. Now, the budget deficit widened to $984 billion in the fiscal year ending September 30th last month. That's a 26% jump from 2018 and the highest level in seven years. For old times' sake, the budget deficit is the difference between the federal government's revenue and its spending. Now, the government is allocating more money to things like defense and social security programs and even health care. And that's partly a function of an aging U.S. population. So more money to that. Then there's the national debt. The government is spending almost as much on interest payments as it does on Medicaid. That's around $380 billion. It's because we owe money. So in total, the U.S. government spent $4.4 trillion on programs and services during the fiscal year. Now, revenue is what the government makes up for in taxes, tariffs, fines, and other payments. So we are actually spending more, but customs duties jump 70% year over year to 71 billion. And if you're thinking, hmm, increased tariffs from the trade war, you're right. Corporate tax receipts rebounded with a 12% gain, but the $1.5 trillion tax cut passed in 2017 by Trump isn't expected to actually drive enough economic growth to pay for itself. These are facts. So what does it all mean? The U.S. has run a budget deficit of more than a trillion dollars before. In fact, around a decade ago, it notched four straight years in the tread couple digits. I like that word, right? The deficit peaked around uh, at around $1.4 trillion in 2009 as the Obama administration poured jet fuel on the economy to get out of the Bush recession, but we're repeating the same pattern again. So bottom line, the current deficit has little precedent at these levels outside recessions or wartime, and it's probably going to get bigger, it's probably going to get worse, and it's going to have a significant impact on the 2020 election.